Hi, and welcome back to Hacker 101. In this short session, we're going to talk about SSRF, or Server Side Request Forgery. Many applications take a URL from a user and do some server side processing with it, like downloading images to create thumbnails. This isn't something you'll see in every piece of software, but it's certainly not rare. Imagine a reporting dashboard which is able to request a CSV file from a given URI and pull that data in on a regular basis. Every n minutes, it makes a request to the URI you provided in order to show you the latest data. There are a number of ways in which this can go very wrong. Think about the flow of data through an application like this. Any application doing this needs to be able to retrieve data over the network based on some URI, of course. But what does that mean? Well, generally that means you're going to use standard libraries for this, which don't know what you're actually trying to accomplish. If it gets a file URI, it's going to treat it no differently than it would treat a link to an outside server. And what if instead you use the URI on the screen now? It's entirely possible that the server might make a request to that endpoint and add a user without any interaction or further compromise of the infrastructure. This makes mitigation, which we'll discuss in a moment, more complicated because now there needs to be a way for the server to know not just what protocol schemes are safe, but which hosts are safe as well. As an attacker, another interesting thing you can do with SSRF is port scan the internal network. By changing the port number and watching the response time along with any errors that may be shown, it's often possible to port scan accurately and quickly. This can lead to an extensive map of the network infrastructure and provide attackers with the information required to jump to other hosts. These bugs are very common, but they're infrequently discovered. Many SSRF attacks require a thorough understanding of many layers of application logic and indirection. This can make them difficult to find an exploit. And well, mitigating SSRF can be even more difficult. In the best case, you can whitelist a small number of domains and hosts and allow requests only to those. But in practice, this is rarely an option. So there are a few mitigations which can be combined to severely limit these attacks. Limiting connections only to port 80 for HTTP and port 443 for HTTPS will largely prevent port scanning. Additionally, you could do the DNS resolution to find the IP for the target host and confirm that it's not an internal IP prior to connecting. That said, it's kind of a complicated approach. And finally, and probably most importantly, any protocol scheme that isn't HTTP or HTTPS should immediately fail. A fantastic real-world example report is linked, in which an SSRF attack is executed on Shopify via the processing of an SVG file. This report is really a great example of the indirection that can make these difficult to exploit. This particular bug is only one level of indirection away, an SVG upload causes a subsequent request to an image. But it's trivial to imagine situations with one or more additional indirections. In searching for these bugs, consider the ways in which data flows through a system. SSRF bugs often pop up in places where one system interacts with another in a user-controlled way. And if you can control the target for a request, it's quite possible that SSRF is in the cards. As always, thanks for watching and happy breaking.